Hello friends, my name is Ashling, and as ever you're very welcome. Today, as per usual, I'm here to talk about books. So I'm doing the video that I least like to film every month, which is my monthly wrap up. So I'm gonna do my July wrap up today. Ugh. I think the reason that I don't enjoy doing it that much is because once I film my wrap up, I cannot remember the books that I read a month ago. I can't remember the books I finished last week, so this is a little bit of a struggle for me, but we're gonna persevere and maybe with practice, it'll get a bit better, a little bit easier. Anyway, so I read 11 books in July, which surprised me because I didn't feel like I was reading all that much in July, but anyway, I did apparently. So the first book that I read was one of my favorites. I gave it four stars. It was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This book is a little bit of a darling at the moment. I kind of keep seeing it everywhere. I will say I really enjoyed it. So we follow Iris and she's working for a newspaper and she is is vying for kind of this full-time job as a reporter but she is up against this guy as well and they're both kind of trying to get this one job. It's a really interesting setting because it feels as though it's set kind of maybe in like World War II England. It's fantasy so the war is not World War II. We're never really told when it's set but we get this feeling that it is. So there's a war between gods which is really interesting. We don't see a lot of like gods fighting or anything like that. It's just this idea of the war in the background and Iris's brother went off to fight in this war and she can't get in touch with him. So out of desperation she starts writing these letters and for some reason she starts putting them under the door to her closet and she's addressing them to her brother and when she opens the door the letters aren't there anymore so what happens is when the letters are disappearing they're winding up somewhere else so she ends up having this pen pal type communication with somebody else but she doesn't know who that somebody else is but that somebody else does know who she is. Anyway Iris ends up going off to report in this war and we have a little bit of fantasy we have kind of almost like a found family trope we have a bit of a romance it's just a really interesting kind of historical setting but a fantasy setting i really enjoyed this i loved the idea of the kind of communicating via letters and everything that was kind of going on with that there and i'm really looking forward to reading the next one. I actually remember how this book finished and I want to know what came of it. That was a library book and the next book then that I read was another library book that I was really excited to read and it is the first in a series. The first book is called The Age of Myth and it's written by Michael J. Sullivan. I believe there are six books in this series and I think it was actually just finished up with the last book this year. So this book is quite a pastoral story. It's really interesting. So we start out and we have these people and they are fearful of these fairies whom they see kind of as gods. They have this agreement between kind of humans and these fairies that the humans won't go near these gods as they see them and then they will be left alone. They will be kept safe because there is a history of war there as well but in the beginning of the book, this is not a spoiler, one of these fairies accidentally gets murdered by a human and then the story ensues. I thought this was really great. I thought maybe it was a little bit slow in the beginning but I found the characters really interesting. I found the tropes really interesting. I really liked the main characters. There are some really great kind of badass women in this book. It's high fantasy but it's not like dungeons and dragons and it's really pastoral, really kind of gentle in a way even though there is a lot of fighting, a lot of violence, a lot of war. It feels almost like mythological in a sense as well. There is a lot of myth surrounding this story as well and I'm really looking forward into getting the next one which I believe is Age of Swords. It is on the way to my library as we speak, which is good because I feel like I've been waiting a long time on it. I was in danger again of forgetting it. Okay, so both of those books, really good. Next book, the first one off of my own shelves. Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. I'm unhauling this after this video. I wasn't impressed. I know that this story is a bit of a darling. I know that people are quite obsessed with it. I'm not sure quite what the story is with it. So I believe it was self-published possibly. I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, back in the day. I was in a bookshop recently and I had heard loads about this series. I came across this book, 
but the bookshop also had every other book in the series as well and I've seen the same in other bookshops so I guess Penguin must have picked them up because they're so popular. So we follow our main character Fortuna and her brother has also gone missing just like Divine Rivals but that's where the similarities end because it's just not a great book in my opinion. So this is another fantasy. Our main character Fortuna is looking for her brother, doesn't know where he has gone and she ends up going to this kind of fairy world with another fairy and I'm not going to get into the story too much but I didn't enjoy it. I will not be continuing with it. And what I found really strange was that we kind of allow, you know, one or two typos or whatever in a book. You know, we find them every now and again. It's okay, it's not ideal, but I did notice in this book there are so many and the fact that it was picked up by Penguin, I feel like there was just no editing process. It was very strange. It just all felt really juvenile and really like I just didn't like it. I gave it two stars. I very rarely give a book a one star. I don't know what my distinction between one and two is. I think I just like to be kind. I finished it so I gave it two stars but then again I don't rate DNFs so I don't know when I ever give a one star. Maybe it deserved a one star. We'll say 1.5. We'll middle ground it. So the next book then again was a little bit of an improvement or a lot of an improvement. I'm sorry to say that I didn't love this next one but it needs no introduction. It was The Fellowship of the Ring by Tolkien. So it's the first book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So we follow Frodo as he goes on a bit of a quest with some friends to destroy a ring. I don't know that I need to go into this anymore. I have seen the films. I don't know if I ever actually saw the first film, but I've definitely seen the second and third ones. I really enjoyed those. The book is quite pastoral. It's quite gentle. There's a lot of walking. If you like a book about a long walk, you'll likely enjoy this. Maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of singing in it. So there's a lot of verse in it. And, um, I won't lie, toward the end I was just completely skipping it. I was like, Peter Jackson made the right call when he removed all the singing from the films, didn't he? It was grand. I felt like it was going to feel more epic than it did. I felt like there was going to be more action. I was really glad to be finished it. I thought it was quite slow. I will continue on into reading The Two Towers and I'm so sorry to say that I didn't love it. I was quite sad about it, but it is what it is, right? I gave it three stars though. It definitely wasn't as bad as Fortuna Sworn. Fortuna Sworn can get in the bit. The next book then that I read was actually an audio book. I listened to it on my library app so I really wanted to read Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel but unfortunately it wasn't available at the time when I was ready to start a new audio book so I decided to pick up Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel instead. And boy oh boy am I glad that I did. I thought that I wasn't ready for another pandemic story given the past few years, right? But it turns out that I was or that I at least was ready for this one. So we kind of follow a world that are connected by one man. He's an actor and something happens to him on a stage at the very beginning of the book just as the pandemic is starting out and there's this virus or whatever it is that's traveling around the world and it's traveling fast. Once you are inflicted with it you will likely be dead within the next day or so which is scary. So I thought that this book was going to be heavily focused on this pandemic which to some degree naturally it is but we are more so focused on the different relationships so the book as I said is kind of focused around this one actor I believe his name was Arthur and the people that he knew the people in his life and what happens to them before during after all of this happens so we jump around a little bit in timeline and it's really interesting how the stories are interwoven. It's really kind of profoundly and beautifully written. I feel like I almost did this book a disservice by listening to it rather than actually physically reading it. It was really good. It was really good. I was really surprised by how good this book was. Um, I gave it four stars. I feel like it could have potentially done a little bit better than that had I actually physically read it, but who knows? I would definitely recommend this one, even if you feel like, nah, I can't do another pandemic story right now. Um, maybe you can. Okay, so the next one that I read proved to me that maybe we should leave the past in the past. So I did a reading blog on this. I read 
The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides and I think this could have been my third time reading this book so this was one of my favourite books from when I was a teenager and I decided for pure nostalgia's sake that I was going to reread it and see what I thought of it. I gave it three stars. If you want to know more about what I thought about it you can check out that reading vlog. I thought it was fine. It wasn't quite so profound and interesting as I remember it being but mind you I read it when I was 16, 17. I don't think it's a terrible book. I just had much higher hopes for it. Uh, we follow the story of a group of five girls who all end up dying by suicide and their story is told by a group of boys that were absolutely infatuated with them during their high school years. That's all I'm gonna say about that. The next book that I read was the beginning in a fantasy trilogy so the Farseer trilogy I read the first book which was Assassin's Apprentice which is by Robin Hobb. We follow Fitz. Ah Fitz I love him. He is the illegitimate son of the king in waiting. So the king's son he is the next in line to become king and he's essentially his bastard. <laughs> I hate, I hate the way they use that word. But anyway, uh, we follow Fitz as he is dropped at the door of the castle by his grandfather and his mother. So we don't know anything about his mom and her side of the family. We just take up from Fitz's memories from when he was dropped off at this door. So his dad's chivalry is greatly shamed by the fact that he has an illegitimate son and he ends up moving away with his wife. So Fitz is essentially raised in the keep with the staff of the keep amongst the animals and he builds up this great connection with the animals and I loved that side of the story. He mostly wanders around the keep so a lot of the story is set within the keep. It feels very domestic and also within the town that the keep is set in. There is a little bit of travel in this book kind of toward the end where we come across a little bit of a kind of more intriguing stories. A lot of people said that this was very slow and to stick with it, it gets really good. But to be honest with you, I loved it from the get-go. I don't know, it's because I'm such an animal lover and this was so animal heavy. He just had the best relationship with the dogs and the horses, it was great. There is something going on outside of the city that needs to be dealt with. And Fitz is trained as an assassin. So the, tr the king tries to make use of him essentially. So he trains him as an assassin and Fitz is sent off to find out what exactly is going on. There is a lot more to it than that, but I'm just gonna leave it there because I can talk about it all day. But I actually absolutely loved this book. Gave it four to four and a half stars. Cannot wait to continue with uh, Royal Assassin. That's the next one I had to check there. I'll let you know how we get on when we get to that. It also wasn't too chunky of a book either, which is nice. The next ones are much chunkier, but you know, it was like 400 pages, which is pretty good for a fantasy. The next book probably again needs no introduction. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Right, so this is yet another fantasy book and we follow our protagonist and she is a teenager and she is set out to be a scribe. She is training to be a scribe for her whole life and that's what she believes she's gonna be but her mother is a general in this army and she says, nah, -ah, girl, you're gonna be a dragon rider. There aren't gonna be any scribe children in my family. We're all badass dragon riders. Now, uh, our protagonist, is disabled. She has the exact same illness that I was born with. It is never said exactly what she has in the book but it is very heavily Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome coded uh, which means somebody with EDS has really crap connective tissue which causes a myriad of symptoms and issues not the least of which is joint problems because our joints don't stay in place. They wobble all over the place. We're like jelly, but in a human body. So our muscles have to do all the work because our connective tissue won't. But our girl has it too. And at times she made me quite envious because she has a far greater quality of life than I have. But anyway, I'm rambling. So we follow our girl as she's sent into this school, this deathly school that she has not had any training for. There are people dying left, right and centre and they're all vying to become dragon riders. Not everybody will become a dragon rider. There won't be enough dragons for everybody and that's if you actually make it that far because chances are you're gonna die 
before you even make it that far. And even if you do make it to the day when you bond with a dragon, the dragon might just kill you instead. So that was fun. It felt quite high stakes. It was quite fun as well. I liked how the protagonist was fleshed out. I just really loved that representation. So I think I'm always going to be biased because I've never seen EDS representation in a book before. So that was cool. But there is also a romance. It's kind of enemies to lovers romance. Um, I'm not a big romance girly. So I wasn't so sold on that and maybe toward the end I was a bit like okay right yeah I get it I get it get on with it but I did love the actual story itself and when our protagonist does end up bonding with the dragon I love the banter that she has with her dragon I love the intrigue I love what's going on I love the school setting I like where it's going there is some danger and then the ending of this book I don't very often pre-order books right but I pre-ordered the sequel to this one because the last paragraph in this book, my jaw dropped. So I really wanna know what happened there. It wasn't the best fleshed out story. Some of the side characters were a bit cardboardy. There were some plot holes, things weren't perfect, but I really enjoyed it. I loved it. <laughs> uh, I understand it's not gonna be for everybody. People aren't gonna be able to see past the glaring plot holes at points, but I didn't care. I really didn't care so that was fourth wing and I cannot wait for the next one and I'm really glad that it's coming out this year so I don't have to wait and hopefully I won't have forgotten the first book. The next book that I finished in July was my next book in my Shadowhunters series, Mortal Instruments series. It was City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. So again we follow Clary Frey who is a shadow hunter. She's a teenager from New York based in New York who essentially hunts demons and there is one super bad guy that is still on the loose and they follow him into this kind of magical city where a lot of shadow hunters are based or are from and I didn't enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed the first two and maybe it was the setting I maybe didn't enjoy the fact that it wasn't set in New York. I don't know, maybe the world wasn't as fleshed out in this one as I would have liked because it wasn't set in a real place so it needed a little bit more grounding or maybe I just missed out on it, I don't know. But I didn't hate it, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, so this book is the third book in the Mortal Instruments series. There are six books but as I found out since this is kind of the final book so it's the first trilogy and there's kind of like a solid ending to that now then I think the next book that Cassandra Clare wrote was not actually City of Fallen Angels which is the fourth Mortal Instruments book it was a different one so I'm not sure quite about the reading order now I think I'll just continue with the Mortal Instruments and if I have to go back then I might go back but um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it and I'm happy enough to continue. It's definitely very young adult, definitely very uh, 2010s, but it's grand. It is what it is. It's a bit of fun. What else can I say about it? They're well loved and I understand why to some degree. So right, so the next book that I read was another audiobook. So I got a free credit on Libro.fm and I put out on my Instagram for some cozy recommendations for an audiobook. I got quite a few good ones, I think. So I now have a cozy book list that I'd like to get around to because I just feel like cozy books are kind of my thing as I have mentioned time and time again. But one of the suggestions that I got and something that I had been considering as well because I've seen a little bit of booktubers talking about it and it just sounded kind of like something that I was up for. So it was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. So we follow our protagonist who is a witch in England. She is in her early 30s. Her life has been quite lonely because in this world, witches aren't really allowed to spend too much time together because there will be power surges, it's dangerous. The majority of the world don't actually realize that witches exist. Our protagonist gets a message one day about coming to tutor three young witches, which is really unusual because as I said, generally witches kind of live that solitary lifestyle because of that danger element. So she ends up going to Nowhere House to tutor these young witches and to kind of help them restrain their power and to get things in order and there is a great kind of found family trope here. I wanted to live in this world. It was really nice. There was a lovely romance in it as well, kind of 
grumpy sunshine maybe a little, although I don't know if our protagonist is quite sunshine, but there was some great banter in here. It was really lovely. I just felt like it was exactly what I wanted. It was a little lovely warm hug in a book. So I was listening to it while I was crocheting, the rain outside, like it was just this ideal setting for me. I really enjoyed it and if it sounds like it's your thing, give it a go. It's just really sweet, almost to the point of being a little bit twee, but it was just what I wanted at the time. So like this girl, like she makes tea. Uh, she's really good at making potions and her potions are tea that people drink and it's just Oh, it's also lovely and she lives in this attic bedroom with this lovely balcony by the sea and it just all seems so lovely and I wanted to be her I think I think that's what it was I just, just really liked it the final book then book number 11 that I read in July was another little middle grade fantasy and I have never read this series before so I'm reading them for the first time as an adult Percy Jackson and the lightning thief this was a lot of fun. So we follow Percy who gets himself into trouble a lot. He's a 12 year old boy and he's in a school and he has been expelled from quite a few schools. He's a bit of a troublemaker but it seems like he's not a bad kid. He's just finding himself in these situations that he didn't really intend on and he's not malicious but you know stuff happens. So he's living with his mom and his mom's husband who is not great and he keeps getting sent off to all of these different schools. So eventually what happens is he finds out that his dad was actually a god and that he is a demigod. That's a lot to take for a little boy I reckon but anyway he takes it well. He takes it in his stride. So we follow Percy as he kind of ends up going to Half Hill House where there are a lot of other kind of demigods floating around. A lot of kids. Is it Half Hill House? I think so. Something along those lines anyway. Something happens whereby Zeus's lightning bolt is stolen and it is believed that Percy has had a hand in it because they believe it was something to do with his dad and so Percy has to go on this quest with a couple of friends to retrieve this lightning bolt and prove that he didn't actually steal this lightning bolt and to stop this huge war from breaking out. I wouldn't know much about Greek mythology and there was a lot of references in this to Greek mythology but not in a way that I felt left out that I couldn't piece things together. We come across like some of the kind of better known stories like obviously Zeus and Hercules and Medusa so some of the ones that I was aware of but there are also loads more that I wasn't aware of and I really enjoyed kind of learning about those through this little boy's perspective. There are some great friendships in this. It's just a bit of fun. It's just a bit batshit, like there's just so much going on here. I haven't seen like the film or the films. I don't know if there's more than one even, but I will be pursuing the rest of the books and I will be pursuing the film or films once I've read the books. That's that. I had a bit of a mixed reading month, I think. Some of the books I really loved. You win some, you lose some. You might wonder why the hell I'm here on a Sunday rather than on on my usual Wednesday, especially when you got a Wednesday video from me this week, but I don't know if I will continue with the Wednesdays. I'm feeling a little bit under pressure with them because I like to do things on Mondays. And then my video goes out on a Wednesday and I'm like, oh, well, I'll start the next one next Monday. And I'm not home over the weekends generally to kind of get cracking on it. And then I find myself feeling a little bit under pressure. So I'm like, hey, Ashling, why don't you just start to put out your videos on a Sunday instead? So here we are. We're going to trial this for a little while. See how we go. That's that from me anyway. Aside from that ramble, I hope you're doing well. I hope you've been enjoying your weekend. Let me know how you are. Let me know what you're reading at the moment. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I hope you're minding yourself. I hope you're minding each other. If you feel it, don't forget to give me a little bit of a like, a little bit of a subscribe. And if not, no worries as ever. You take care of yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you very, very, very soon. Bye bye.